Okay, next we're going to try to create walls. So please open up here um, under 06 adding walls.rvt files. Once open, you'll find that you will be able to add walls by clicking on either the part on the top here, the split button from the top, or click on the drop down list if you wish to see more options here. So by default, we will use the wall architectural feature. So we will click on this. And before we click, there are a few things we need to pay attention to. You will find that whenever you click on wall architecture here, you will be able to select a few things. This would happen you will see that there is a modify place wall portion down here. This will allow us to draw the wall either in straight lines or in various shapes or in curves or arcs or splines even. Eh? Or we can even use that use the pick wall function here to pick up the walls of this. The next part is also pay attention to the prop down at the screen here. This portion here would, in a sense, uh, give you clues as to how to set up or draw the walls. So next, what we will try to do is, again, we will click, let's say, just one stroke across. And when we are done with the command, now if you notice here though, there is a little option here, option checkbox called chain. What happens is when you click on chain, it will continue to draw the wall until it forms a loop proper. If you disable this option, what happens is when you start drawing, you notice that it will break up this way. And then it does not link up in this sense. Now to cancel this command, we will have to press escape once and twice. Okay, double escapes to finish off the command. Okay, let's try this chain feature. So we're going to create the same wall again now. And then we're going to activate the chain. So how to do this? We just go with a horizontal line up 45 degrees. Notice that when there are a lot of prompts in terms of length as well as angles when you try to draw something. Revit provides you, uh, this is some of, these are some of the good features that Revit will provide. Okay, let's say I'm going to draw at 4 meters, 45 degrees, and 4 meters down again at another 45 degrees. Okay, I can keep doing this 4 meters and the same thing as well. Similarly, 4 meters as well at 45 degrees. Okay, and before I finish off with uh, another 4 meter horizontal line like that. Okay, now without the chain feature, however, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to try with uh, say 4 meters. And with this, you notice that I can't continue. Okay. Okay. And if I go up and click, it also does not continue and it doesn't end like that. So that's the key difference in the chain feature. Okay. So let's try out by creating these, okay, using the various tools and creating these shapes. Now, subsequently next, I'm going to talk a bit about the constraints, alright? On the constraints itself, if you notice here, the moment we draw a wall here, alright? I hope you still remember how to call out the project properties palette, okay? It's under view and properties palette here. You'll find that each time you, after you create and we click on constraints. Huh? Okay. 
I can begin to draw a wall that looks exactly the same this way and this way now I can keep changing them to from Now, they all look the same on plan, but when we activate the elevation view, you will find that all these look quite different because of the constraints here. So if you pay attention here, if I select the shortest wall, it has a constraint of up to, a top constraint of up to level 2, which is the level 2 line here. Now for this wall here, it has a top constraint of up to level 3, and then the level 3 level line is here now if we were to change this one this one is an unconnected top constraint so you notice here that there is this option for unconnected height so technically we can key in any height that we would require okay but for this instance we're not going to we are going to change this constraint to say roof level so you notice now the constraint the walls can be built this way based on the constraints so a view of this in 3D would be like that now we can also make changes to the various wall types so I'm going to close this and take a look if we were to change this you'll notice that we can change this to say a 12 inch wall the thickness will change and we can change it to let's say an interior partition to our fire rating now it all looks the same at this point because the detail level has been set to cause if we were to change this detail level to fine for example and that the scale to be a smaller scale at 25 scale you will find that there are some key significant differences that becomes visible now already compared to say a generic um, a brick wall for example so these are some of the things we can do to change the wall types okay we can not only change the detail levels here we can change the detail view levels here as well at this point okay that will pretty much conclude our lesson for this week. So please, there will be an attached mock um, test paper as well. And uh, we will plan to release the, the answer scripts on Friday. So while you have the time now from today, Tuesday onwards, so please take the time to revise through and work on uh, and get familiar with how to use Revit up to this stage. Okay, thank you.